Did Jason Nash get taken off of the David Dobrik payroll? Because... Guys, what's up? My name is Jason Nash, and this is my submission to Live Fest. I'm new to TikTok Live. This is your hard-earned money. Stop giving it to these people begging for it. Jeffree Star went live, but he made over $10,000 on TikTok Live with gifts. What is going on? Why are people sending money to people who are already rich? And then why are people sending money to people who used to be rich and, and because of their own poor financial decisions are now in a situation where apparently they can't afford anything? Not even their own house. It's giving dystopian society. Do you 100% need real life skills outside of social media? Social media influencers make it seem like their job is going to be forever, but it's really not. So what happens when it all ends? Ouch. Hello everybody, it is me Salem and welcome back to my Chanel. <laughs> As you can tell, I got a new puppy. His name is Kenji and he really likes licking my foundation off, which is like $50, so chill. You can't pay me back, Kenji, unless I go on TikTok live and beg for money. I'm Jason. I'm Josiah, and everybody's always talking. But what happens when the talk isn't cheap? And it is what it is. Right on, man. The amount of YouTubers who used to be massive on YouTube who are now going onto TikTok isn't necessarily like a new surprise thing. It makes sense that whenever there's a new platform that is doing big that you would expand your horizons so you don't die and fade into irrelevancy. So you just gotta hold on to that one little thing that could possibly keep your career going because if you don't have your career anymore then who knows what will happen. You could lose your Instagram clout, your YouTube followers. Imagine being in a position where dare I say it you have to get a real job I don't want a job oh MG ah, please somebody I don't want a job See, that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Why exactly is this happening? Why is it so common? The who's, the what's, the why's, especially the how's. Because a lot of these people used to be very, very successful, made millions, and have nothing to show for it. And unfortunately, this has fallen onto one of the Vlog Squad members, Jason Nash. Like, do you ever think about going to DoorDash or to it like a you know did you ever think about going back to like any other job or was like, like I can't do anything else like I can't do anything else like I can't do anything else first of all that's not true but second this is the exact problem with so many influencers who preach to everyday normal people who want to pursue social media they're like just don't go to college just don't check your bank account you'll be fine and then they themselves end up like this no you need real life skills no matter what you're trying to pursue in life you always need a plan B period so definitely grab some cup of tea grab some snacks sit back relax and let's get into this of course as always because i'm trying to be smart with my money thankfully we have two sponsors for today so if you're anything like me, you tend to be really forgetful, especially when it comes to subscriptions. Oh yeah, because you forgot to cancel a subscription from 10 months ago. Thankfully, that's where Rocket Money comes in. Because not only is Rocket Money super easy to use, it's super convenient, it's fast, and it was able to cancel all of the subscriptions that I didn't even know I had way faster than spending like an hour on the phone with these customer service reps who do not want you to cancel with them. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions Descriptions, monitors your spending and helps lower your bills. They'll even try to get a refund for you for the last couple of months of wasted money on subscriptions and negotiate to lower your bills for you up to 20%. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash salemtovar. That's rocketmoney.com slash salemtovar. Rocketmoney.com slash salemtovar. Have you ever waited months for a doctor's appointment and they're just like, Oh, sorry about that, babes. There's nothing we can do about it. Just drink water. You just feel really unheard and judged. Well, you shouldn't feel that way when talking to a doctor. That is where ZocDoc comes in. ZocDoc is the place where you can find and book doctors who will make you feel comfortable and actually listen to you. All with verified patient reviews so that you can make sure the vibes are like vibing. And with ZocDoc, you get so much more options than you know. You 
can search for these doctors by location, availability, and insurance to get things done as conveniently possible for you. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. So go to Zoc doc.com slash salem and download the zocdoc app for free then find and book a top rated doctor today that's z-o-c-d-o-c dot com slash salem zocdoc slash salem all right, we're at part one and we are going to be deep diving almost immediately into a lot. We're gonna be talking about TikTok, TikTok lives started to become huge with YouTubers and influencers. Why the heck is Jason Nash there? Cause he used to be rich, now he has nothing to show for it. Womp womp. Social media works fast and if you can't catch up to it, be very careful. Cause then you will be the one who gets left behind. In 2022, TikTok generated over $11 billion in revenue with over 1 billion active accounts and influencers on there. These people are like huge huge mega stars like i'm talking about like 151 million followers <laughs> what am i doing wrong god they have added so many features. I'm talking people eligible for commission. There's a TikTok shop where you can get stuff such as this, or you can go on something called TikTok Live and in real time, chat with people, see what people are up to and donate to them. But I mean, people be making bank at it. It started to get really popular around last year when people pretended to be NPCs and it completely blew up with one person in particular called Pinky Doll, where she says stuff like, hmm, ice cream so good and then make seven thousand dollars a day from it again god why this created a whole influx of people who were trying to do the same thing it was really strange to see people who are already known to make a lot of money kind of jumping on these trends to also make even more money and never sat right with my spirit money is money you can never have too much of it and if you do have too much of it then just give it to me share don't be stingy no but for real i'm being honest it's really weird to see people who already have established platforms and, and a branded image in massive followers following doing these tiktok lives to get more money but what's even more wild to me is the people who actually donate to people who are already way richer than you will ever be in any other lifetime or donate to people who aren't even doing anything at least be funny do something and i know some of you guys are gonna be like ah, salem you can't tell people what to do with their money and yes i can and i just did girl if you don't give your extra coin to charity speaking of jason nash who is jason nash girl I don't know, but apparently he was famous enough to be chilling with David Dobrik and his 10 million Teslas. He was previously part of the vlog squad that was run by David Dobrik, which had 19 million subscribers and 7.1 billion views. Other people who were part of this vlog squad group were Scotty Sire, Jeff Wittick, Liza Koshy, Gabby Hanna, Josh Peck. Josh Peck, what are you doing here? But I have one or two, and then mm -hmm. I, it leads me to my other favorite drink, cassette. <laughs> That's not good. Oh. Well, I at least hope Drake is doing good nowadays. Hey, yo, what the fuck? Trisha Paytas at one point. And, of course, Jason Nash. And this story that I'm about to tell is kind of like an, an intermission, but I just have to tell it. I am a person who has very vivid dreams. Like, they seem so real. Tell me why I had this dream. Like, I felt in my heart this love, like this caring, this fondness, this completeness of being married to Jason Nash. I remember telling my family in my dream, I just love him, he's my rock, he's my foundation. I'm like I was genuinely convinced that this man was my soulmate in my dream. I was looking at houses to buy with him in my dream. Like that is how much in love I was with Jason Nash in my dream. Which is ironic because he can't even pay his own house in real life. Apart from being featured on David Dobrik's channel, he then made a podcast with David where they confess their most intimate thoughts, discuss pop culture, and dissect their own contentious relationship. Well, that was a fail because apparently David stopped doing the podcast with Jason, leaving Jason to do only solo work, which didn't really work out in his favor. People were wondering how could someone who came from being on a YouTube channel where there was 7 billion views and being friends with a literal millionaire get you absolutely nothing and now you're kind of panhandling 
on the internet how does that happen but apparently according to jason nash david dobrik's disappearance from the internet really affected him financially a lot of people have different opinions on this situation because a lot of people think that david is a bad friend for not setting jason up financially to be well off after his disappearance but i honestly strongly disagree bro even jason's wife admittedly said that it's no one's fault but jason's as to why he's broke jason is broke because of jason because jason likes the finer things in life like when people look at us it's like oh it's her but you're the problem i'm the problem not him having a chuckle fest at the fact that he's broke and has to bet on tiktok live to pay his bills also fun fact about his wife is that she actually matched with ben affleck on a dating app and she could have been living the sprinkle sprinkle life but nah instead she settled with this dude and she probably low-key regretting it like sir you are going to have to file for bankruptcy if you don't get a job but even then that's the problem he doesn't want to get a job like do you ever think about going to DoorDash or to like a, you know, did you ever think about going back to like any other job or was like, well, I can't do anything else. Like well, I can't do anything else. Well, I can't do anything else. else. He's living way above his means and that's why he's in a financial hole. You mean to tell me this old man didn't invest or save any money or use his exposure to try to make connections or opportunities? God forbid he get a real job. And these comments are 100% right and I agree with them. And so does Jason. Jason Nash himself has admitted to not having any real life basic skills, which is such a dangerous position to put yourself in as an influencer because this job is not a real job. It's super inconsistent and unstable unless you're making David Dobrik and Mr. Beast type of money, which is very rare to achieve even with a big platform. As an influencer myself, knowing how the game kind of works, it's all about connections, being purposeful and intentional with your content and then being smart with what you get out of it and saving it because social media really is a roller coaster sometimes you are going to have lows like lows lows where no one's watching your content at all and then all of a sudden you get these insane highs where everyone's watching your content it's not a stable job to have because it's not a real job. This happens a lot with a lot of people who are associated with bigger names in the YouTube industry. By association, they get a lot of followers and they get a lot of support. But once that main vessel detaches away from the person, this person doesn't know what to do and then they just kind of die out and they don't know how to keep their clout afloat once they're on their own you can't hang on to someone else for your own relevancy now not everyone in the vlog squad or youtube realm has suffered with the departure of a main vessel that they were you know suckling on trisha paytas is doing way better jeff wittick is doing really well despite all the stuff that he went through with david and so many other vlog squad members are doing perfectly fine some even getting normal jobs after the whole vlog squad fiasco there are youtubers such as big nick who used to be part of the vlog squad but is now um doing this i don't believe that tattoos are fruitful for a christian and here's why i don't know how as a christian you could defend yoga as an ex-hindu yoga literally means yoke and you're yoking with these demonic hindu deities things that christians should avoid respecting other religions huh Okay, maybe not all of them are fine. At least he's doing his own thing, I guess. So I do think that a lot of the blame does lie on Jason. You will eventually ride the roller coaster that is social media and eventually die out. Unless you keep rebranding yourself or your image or your content. And when you reach that point, you have to really think and be like, oh man, do I want to rebrand? Do I want to quit? What do I do? You have to really, really think of what you want to do. And this is where real life experience matters because the most unfortunate situation you could ever find yourself in as a social media influencer is being on that roller coaster and you're on the down and you keep staying down oh my gosh i have no real life skills i didn't save any of the money that i was making from my sponsors what do i do you become jason nash Part two, the romanticization of social media jobs and the demonization of real jobs and how that's backfiring on everyone. I hate when influencers who don't know anything about living real life 
try to give other people advice of you don't need to go to school school is literally useless you don't need to go to college you don't need to do this and that then this be them on tiktok live begging for money and it doesn't help that we have influencers encouraging everyday people who lack the background knowledge as to how to make it in this industry to blindly leave everything behind and just take a leap of faith because it worked out for them even though their personal situation can't predict how it will go for anyone else we then get stories such as this where people quit their jobs and their security and safety net just to fail at a social media career because a lot of these social media influencers are not being honest with you at all yes it is easy going viral is easy making content can be easy depending on the type of content that you make however seeking longevity in a full-fledged successful long-term career is not i'm always super impressed with people who have been in the game as an og and is still reinventing themselves in their image and still has a strong audience such as people like you know Rhett and Link that's very admirable and so impressive but first and foremost is that Rhett and Link are excellent businessmen and they have those real life skills people skills social media skills to continue their longevity on the internet but they have put in so much work to keep that longevity and it's work that not a lot of people want to put in especially people who are resorting to tiktok lives for relevancy rather than reinventing themselves just make sure you have something set up for you a lot of people will try the social media thing realize wow this isn't for me but thankfully they have something to go back to at the end of the day they have their degrees to fall back on they have a support system to fall back on but what happens when youtube or instagram or tiktok is all you've ever known and you haven't had the time to develop the necessary skills to have something to fall back on at the end of the day when this doesn't work out you have to be a hundred steps ahead when it comes to these things i get it a lot of people want to do social media to get away from from the whole nine to five torture chamber or whatever. There's a lot of background work that goes into it if you want it to be stable. Because not everyone can be a next Trisha Paytas. Not everyone can be the next Charlie D'Amelio. Those success stories which have had such long longevity and have gotten them set up with a TV show, with podcasts and all of these things, that is not gonna be the story for everyone. That is just the harsh truth of the social media game. One day, a lot of these YouTubers, these TikTokers, influencers, Instagrammers, whatever errors will eventually have to come into the crossroads where the decision has to be made of either rebranding and finding longevity out of their viral moment which takes a lot of skill or decide maybe it's just time for them to not continue pursuing their social media career and go back into the real world to get a real job which also requires skills but unfortunately majority of these viral influencers lack both skills in both areas so they resort to begging for money on TikTok Live. The demonization of having a 9 to 5 stable job has been bashed over and over again ever since we started glamorizing social media jobs. That social media influencers who can't rebrand view it as degrading, which is crazy. Like, I'm sorry, I would rather much get a normal job than beg for money on TikTok because of the glamorization of social media work so praised and put on a pedestal that we now are shaming everyday workers for literally no reason despite it actually actually being more valuable and resourceful that a lot of these influencers are terrified to go go back to college they're terrified to go take a class they're terrified to go get a real job i mean look at jason nash he doesn't want to do it because he's afraid of it this just goes to prove that a lot of these influencers have no real life experience it's actually insane we live in a generation where even statistically children are saying on their homework and essays that they don't want to grow up to be doctors they don't want to grow up to be teachers they don't want to grow up to be pilots they want to grow up to be social media influencers because we as a society have put way too much of an importance and glamorized this job way too much to the point where we have made it seem like that's the only option for viable living for anyone which is such a lie i'm someone who has worked in the educational field i can't sit here and act as if that that's where i make my main income because let's be honest teachers don't get paid very well a lot of people in the necessary areas of life don't get paid as much as unfortunately i show speed who live streams and then makes like a million a month and that feels wrong 
because it is. Which is why a lot of these influencers who have had a taste of even more money, such as Jason Nash and David Dobrik, who were making millions per month, of course they don't want to go to a nine to five because they have had that taste of the privilege of doing nothing all day and somehow still getting that sweet, sweet check at the end of the month in which they could buy two houses if they wanted. When real life hits them, what do you mean I have to buy my own makeup instead of getting it for free in the mail? They find going back into real life and having to work for their stuff degrading because they're so used to getting everything for free. I'm someone who has a husband who has a nine to five who works so hard and I admire him with all that I am more than I will ever admire a PewDiePie, more than I will ever admire a Kai Sinet. Not saying that these people don't deserve what they have or whatever. There are so many people with platforms who do a lot of good for society, who put out inspirational content out there, who do a lot. But these influencers are literally doing nothing. They're just staring at the camera, begging for money. At least do a flip. You know what I mean? At least do something. I just don't get it. If y'all catch me one day working at the supermarket, oh haha, she washed up, she didn't do this, she didn't do that. I guess that YouTube money didn't pay very well, huh? Y'all will never make me feel bad. You will never make me feel bad for working to keep my life together. Absolutely not. However, if you catch me one day begging on TikTok Live, feel free to roast me. It ain't gonna happen. Why? Because there's no shame in working hard for the things that you want. Are you still watching? Good, because we're at the final part. Let's wrap this thing up. It's never too late to invest in yourself and your happiness and your skill set. One of the members of the vlog squad was Gabby Hanna. And Gabby Hanna has had it very, very rough on social media. Um, from breakdowns to people canceling her, from her also being kind of not a very good person towards other people. She kind of disappeared from the internet, but she has kind of resurfaced but not back on social media, but people spotting her at a local YMCA being a fitness instructor. A name I have not heard in a very long time is Gabby Hanna. And very recently it came up on Twitter that she is now a fitness instructor at the Lawrence County YMCA. She said herself that if social media ever stopped working out for her, she would wanna be a fitness instructor. And now she looks fulfilled and she's working hard to sustain the life that she has. I think when it comes to social media influencers and celebrities, regular people kind of have this false pedestal image of them that they're lucky that they don't have to do anything. Why would they want to seek out a normal job when they have the opportunity of a lifetime to not be part of the working class? But there has been so many celebrities and influencers who have gone back to school to get their degrees. Megan Thee Stallion went back to get her college degree. Jennifer Stone is now a nurse. Shaq, who has two degrees and is insisting on his kids to do do the same thing despite them going to be nepo babies then i realized that when i go to a business meeting let's just say you're my agent and the guys over here talking about business they were they were hey shaq how you doing then they talked to my guy and i found that to be disrespectful i understand oh you don't think i understand your terms i'll be back university of phoenix uh masters of business just you know just to let them know that i understand what's going on so now you can talk to me it doesn't matter how big you are it doesn't matter how little you are it doesn't matter where you come from it will always be more admirable when someone works hard for what they have and experiences real life with real life skills and uses that to reach other people or to sharpen their own skills and invest in themselves than to flat out give up and say that there's nothing that you can do to make things better or that it's too late to invest in yourself that mindset is so dangerous. Well, I, can't I can't do anything else. Well, I can't do anything else. Because you always kind of assume that the grass is greener on the other side. Girl, no. The grass is greener wherever you water it. All right, guys, that is honestly it for today's video. If you made it to the very end of this video, comment down a duck emoji down below to let me know that you watched the entire thing. Um, remember to like and subscribe. Comment down below what you guys think of this whole thing i would love to know what your guys's opinions are i have an instagram and a tiktok my instagram is at underscore salem tovar underscore so go ahead and follow me on there my tiktok is just salem tovar because no one else has my name i also have a podcast called the salem tovar podcast it's on spotify it's on apple music all audio streaming services so go ahead and give me a follow there you guys know i give you homework at the end of every video honestly my only homework for you guys for today is to write down a list of things that you're 
you're grateful for and just really give yourself some love and shout out to the people with real jobs out there because y'all are keeping the world going trust we have way too many influencers not enough electricians okay anyways with that being said thank you guys again so much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye